Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We've just seen Bitcoin put in its third day down. Now as again, swing trader, these are important times to pay attention to in the markets, which is why I'm gonna cover the SwiftX portfolio yet again. Now I haven't done a short video on it, so that's what I'm planning to do in today's video to cover these cryptocurrencies and my thoughts around why I've picked each one and potentially why we have the opportunity to change them up down the track should we see a couple of signs play out. So if you love the sound of that, let me know. Hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along on the cryptocurrency journey here and hit the bell notification icon so that you're updated with this time sensitive information. Let's dive into the video. First up, we're at CoinGecko with the market caps. We're at 2.26 trillion. Things are looking pretty good. Overall, we've had such big pumps in a lot of major cryptocurrencies like XRP, Binance, Ethereum has been moving up. And of course, Dogecoin recently with a huge 370% pump over the last seven days. That has cooled off a lot since hitting its high at around 47 cents. Now we're here to look at the portfolio. So just as a reminder, this is SwiftX. A link to this is in the description down below. Of course, you don't have to use it, but this is what I'm using here because it has a demo portfolio option in case you were just wanting to learn more about cryptocurrency and how to position yourself and set up your own portfolio. So it's an easy way to do it without having to throw a whole lot of money on the line. And in fact, you don't have to put any money on the line in this case. Now I've got six cryptocurrencies here, all of which I hold in my portfolio, but this is the demo portfolio. So I hold them in my uh, regular money portfolio. And currently they're all very similar in percentages. So we're looking at around 20 to 15% for these top five. And then Zillica is my outside bet here with 10% only because it's lower down on the market caps and it could pump a lot more. These other ones are a little bit safer and the whole point of the portfolio was for it to be something that didn't uh, take too much time. Now, we're just, we've seen a Bitcoin drop for a third straight day so far. Now, sometimes we have to pay a little more attention and do a little more work than we would like because at the end of the day, I wanted to make something that maybe we only have to look at on a weekly basis. Some people are here to make 20Xs, 50Xs, 100Xs. I think that's getting extremely difficult, especially if you aren't familiar with the space and you're just trying to start out. Uh, those gains are made at the lows. So now I'm trying to play it a little bit safer. And like I said, I'm not putting any new money into Bitcoin at the moment because I think we're getting to some sort of extremes. I think the risks are starting to outweigh the reward at this point. The reward was very high in early 2020. First up on the charts, I'm gonna go through these four points here. I've got Bitcoin dominance, Bitcoin potential shakeout, and I'm looking at Litecoin may cop at the hardest if Bitcoin gets the shakeout that I was looking at with the three day down rule, which I'll show you on the chart in just a moment. Bitcoin update, Ethereum BTC chart. So BTCD is the first one that we're going to have a look at here. Now, Bitcoin dominance, something we've been following for ages and it did break down from this low of 60, around that 60, 61, and that's what we're expecting. And the targets, you know, I've been talking about it for a very long time, using our fibs, looking at around 50 to 48 for the first one. Obviously, 54 was our uh, target before these levels, but that absolutely sliced through 54 and we're looking towards 49.50 basically. And then from that, should we have a little recovery and then another fall? I'm looking for around 42. So Bitcoin to go to 42% dominance, which is 200%. That's why the two is here of the double top. And that's simply how you use this GAN uh, FIB tool. So currently sitting at around 53, we've bounced off a low of around 51%. So Bitcoin is gaining a little more. However, the Bitcoin price is falling while I'm making this video. And three days down, is essentially lower top, lower bottom on a daily bar. You can use candles, it just gets a little more complicated to see what's going on here. That's why I use the bars without any color and some people say it looks boring. We're making money here. I'm not here to color in drawings with different colored crayons. So this is why I use simple to see lines and patterns. Uh, this is a day down, another day down and currently lower high, lower low. So three days down, isn't a great sign from the absolute top. And we've seen these sort of things happen before or at least come down and reverse. And we really wanna see the market begin to reverse. So we saw this was the old all-time high in Feb, one massive day down, another massive day down, and then an inside day followed by an outside. Outside meaning a high, 
and a low in the same day. Higher high, higher low, then down again. So this saved the pattern. You don't want to see three days down in a row. We saw an inside, a down, down, up. So only two days down from another previous all-time high. Now this is the current all-time high with an inside day, down, down, down. So it's the first time we are seeing three days down. This is not a good sign. Looking back uh, in early January, we had an inside, down, down, inside again. So that saved the pattern. The last time we really saw this, and this happens in all-time high territory, this was at the all-time high in 2017. Day up, see higher, higher low, higher high. One day down, two days down, three days down, four days down, five days down. So we got to three days and that was the early warning sign that we could go further. So you don't know what's going to happen next, but one day down, two days down, three days down. If we get higher volume on today's day, I'm really gonna be looking out in case we continue to fall with this pattern. I don't think it's over long term and we might just see a sustained bear market within a bull market. And so that's what I think could happen especially if we get these extra days because we need to flush out some of this money. It's gone absolutely crazy. Legacy coins are pumping that do nothing. It's just gone wild. So eventually this money's got to flow out somewhere. People are going to take profits and then wait for the whole system to recover again. Like we saw last time, it took out these lows. So there's a swing low here at 15,500 on Bitcoin. And so all I'm doing is just looking at the patterns repeating now. And this was a very big sign that we had multiple days down, which we hadn't had throughout the, uh, the bull market. We saw one here, but we weren't able to clear out these lows and it reversed. We got high volume on the low and we got a nice reversal straight away. So we wanna see a, str a strong reversal straight away if we get it. See here, we've got those days down, but we've got a strong reversal. So let's hope we're only going through one of these sorts of patterns which leads me to my next point. This is kind of where I see us now in this section of the bull market where it just continues up, but we're just losing that bit of energy until we recover, flush out the weak money, build some strength, and then we can get the final leg of the bull market in. Now that might be six months or 12 months, I don't know. 2017, it wasn't very long to go until it went from its five or $6,000 low to its $20,000 top, which is only 300 or so percent, you know, a little more. But that's where the least amount of gains are made, but it looks like the most extreme gains. You can see on the chart, it just looks extreme, but this is the least amount of profit return you could get compared to buying in in 2015 and 16 and then selling out at that $7,000 top. Those gains are far, far greater than what we'll see in the last leg. And I expect that to happen again. The biggest gains have been made from 2020, from 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, up to 60,000. And then the next leg is going to look more extreme, but I don't. The, well, the percentage gains aren't going to be anywhere near it. That's Bitcoin. If we get the moves down, then I think some of our portfolio is going to take a hit. But like I said, I want to position myself in a way that I'm pretty comfortable with holding these coins. So the next one is Cardano. Cardano looks like it's setting up and it's hopefully going to hold its position here should anything happen. So we've got Cardano USD. It has had some accumulation in this zone and we be, have begun to break out and come back and retest the old highs. So, so far we're looking okay. Cardano BTC, again, starting to get another break up with higher lows. That's a good sign. So that's uh, one major reason why I'm still continuing to hold Cardano in this portfolio. Now at around 19%, DOT, DOT is also looking pretty solid. Uh, let's scroll, here we go, dot $41. We've broken out. Yesterday's bar wasn't the best because we had a breakout of the highs and a very low close on high volume. But we continue to hold above all of these previous levels. So if I bring this line down to those, you can see that we have begun to hold that. So that is still a good sign. We begin to break down from that, things are looking a little shakier. Dot BTC. Same deal, we've broken up, we continue to try and break up. However, the lows are getting higher. So that's still a good sign. And DOT has a very big future ahead, especially with parachains getting launched and a whole lot of projects that are coming on to uh, Polkadot. And I see Polkadot growing stronger than Cardano. I know that offends a lot of people, but I, don't, I honestly don't care. <laughs> this is the way I see the market. You gotta do what's right for you. I'll skip 
GRT at the moment and just look at link on the chart. Link is also setting up very nicely. Link USD has broken to new all time highs and again, potentially just coming back to sit on these highs. The factor here, if this is to be a, a fake out rather than a true breakout, is if we fall back into this accumulation zone. Just means the market needs more time. Long term, very bullish on Link, but it just depends on time. At the moment, we're still okay. Maybe we just come back and test these old highs at around 37, uh, 35 to 37 ish dollars and I'm not too concerned. We can, we can range in this area, build up more momentum to take off again. That looks good. Link BTC, same deal. This is fantastic. Low, this is where I was buying. We talked about that back in January. It looked like a reasonable entry point, especially when it broke through these highs here at 50,000 Satoshis. We came back down, made another higher low from this low. So this is the major area. And now we've begun to break up on high volume. So Link is staying deep into my portfolio here and I may potentially sell out a position or some of these if we happen to see these uh, become weaker if Bitcoin drops and Link continues to hold strong. We know Link does very well when Bitcoin fails. That's why I'm willing to shift some of my port more of my portfolio into Link to protect it because right now the portfolio is at 15,000 US and we usually look at it in Aussie dollars and it's about a 20 odd thousand dollar. Uh, there it is, 20,000 Aussie dollars in the portfolio. So up around 50, 55 percent. So Link is one of my cryptocurrencies that I will hold as a hedge should Bitcoin begin to drop. It looks great on the dollar chart because it's at all time highs, but holding its ground and against the Bitcoin chart, it is beginning to set up to make another leg up. You can see here Link was all the way up as Bitcoin was all the way down. Next was LTC. I'll do that while we're here. Litecoin has also broken out of this major, major trend that we've been watching for months now. It uh, began to drop, but we've got a big volume coming in here, especially on the weekly chart. We've got a lot of volume at these lows. And now we have broken this descending wedge. This is a good sign. Probably going to just set up here for a little bit, create some more uh, volume here and consolidation before we begin up. And we know from measuring timeframes that when Litecoin goes, it goes fast and strong and then dumps. That's what it's done throughout its entire history. I'm not expecting anything different this time, especially in this sort of market conditions where stuff like Dogecoin's go, Do, Dogecoin goes crazy. And so I'm just expecting to get big returns from Litecoin quickly, sell out. Hopefully uh, Link hasn't gone crazy and I can put some more profits back into Link. Last couple on our list here uh, were GRT, so the graph, and Zillica. So graph, while I'm at this end, is, oh, sorry, you guys didn't see Litecoin, the dollar. That's what you're usually concerned with. I'm usually concerned with the Bitcoin chart. Litecoin dollar, getting very close to these all-time highs, $290. We've punched through to $335. I think maybe we'll see some consolidation here and just wait for the market to figure out what it wants to do before we can take off again. If this goes, then I expect it to go $600, $700,000, somewhere up at that region. We need to at least double or triple this dollar price to meet the same expectations on the BTC chart. So Bitcoin might stay the same or fall a little, which means Litecoin might not get the same US dollar gains, but it'll definitely get the Bitcoin gains, which means we can cycle out of Litecoin, pick up our further Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever we want, and we've improved our portfolio position. The graph, still consolidating, weekly chart. If we get a breakdown of these of this 50% level again around the dollar 50, I would be concerned that we could go to the dollar 20 and just fill in this, this piece of the chart, which doesn't have much data in it. You can see there's a lot of trading going on here with the bars up and down, same deal at the lows, but there's not much trading in this region of 80 to a dollar 50. So that's my only concern with the graph if we don't continue to consolidate uh, above a dollar 50. So I'm happy with this to continue dollar cost averaging into it, but I'm not going all in just yet until I see some continued higher lows. We've got one so far. Let's see if we can put another one in. GRT BTC. Again, same sort of deal. We definitely want to see it break above the 50% level, which is around 3,500 Satoshis. So graph dollar cost averaging, you, see, you can see the ones which I'm more comfortable with and other ones which I'm not as comfortable with, but I think they have strong potential longer term. Now, the last one to have a look at is Zillica. Let's look at it on the BTC chart first. It's continued grinding and grinding and grinding, which is why I like to put a little bit of profit into this every so often because we haven't seen the blow off yet. 
maybe we won't get it, but I'm sus expecting that we should see some sort of blow off, especially once we get through this 360 level because we had a low here, another low, another low, and then it broke down from that level. So once we can get through here, we should get a little bit of a takeoff to five or 700 Satoshis, and then this kind of clear sky up until a 900, 1000 Satoshis. So that's why Zillica is on my list. I think we've still got potential there, and it just continues to grind on the dollar chart, just bit by bit. We were first in around 17 cents, and it's just a slow grind up. And we have taken out the all-time high, Let's see what we can keep doing with this. I expect it to take off, especially with all of the Ethereum narrative and layer twos coming on. That's why Zillica is still on our list here. You can see I've balanced the portfolio a little bit, stuff that should take off, stuff that I can continue dollar cost averaging into. And I just like that balance of the portfolio. A few last points to note. These are the things that I am watching. Solana, I absolutely love this project. And I want to put it in the portfolio at some point, but I still see it has a little bit of falling to, to happen, but I definitely think it's going to take off at some point. It could happen sooner than I would like, but what my plan is, is to take some of the profits out of Litecoin and potentially these two, and then throw it into Solana and bring that on. If Zillica goes crazy, then I definitely want to put it into Solana. Theta, we have sold out of, and we took the profits and put it into Litecoin. I think there's a bit more potential just for a short period. And then if everything works out in timing, I can throw it back into Theta. Ethereum sold out of that to put it into some smaller caps to get these gains going. Again, it's very high risk, especially if this market corrects, which is one of the threats. Bitcoin dumping could throw all of this off at the moment. The other thing is the dollar. So the US dollar, the DXY, if this begins to rise, then it could set the crypto market down again from this point. So that is what we have seen. You know, if the US dollar is increasing, then it tends to, at the moment, drop the price of Bitcoin. And obviously that's a threat to the rest of everything else going on here. So that's where I'm sitting with the portfolio on SwiftX. Let us know your thoughts. What are you thinking with portfolio? What would you put in? What wouldn't you? I know I don't have VChain in there for all you lovers out there. And CRO is not in there. It's not on SwiftX. That's okay. We've got plenty of fantastic projects. There's almost too many, well, there is too many to really decide on to just keep it as a small portfolio so our minds aren't going everywhere. I'd love Solana in there. I wish I got in a hell of a lot earlier and that would be something I would just hold and almost forget about everything else. Just Solana, go hard. But I'm feeling like I could get a slight discount on it. Maybe I'm getting greedy. Time will only tell. That's a look at the SwiftX portfolio, guys. It's the first time I've gone into detail with it in a particular video. So if you enjoy that and you want to see more of it, hit the like button so I know that you're interested in this content. Subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon so you can stay up to date with the cryptocurrency content that I'm producing here on a daily basis. I've also got a free cryptocurrency and investing newsletter that comes out on a fortnightly basis once every two weeks. Leave your email address down below. There's a link there that you can find. It's all completely free. And if you get annoyed with it, unsubscribe, but it's got a lot of fantastic content in there. So I think you'll find a lot of value from it. Also, if you've got cryptocurrency just sitting around, check out the links down below for crypto.com and BlockFi where you can earn interest on your cryptocurrency. Just sign up with those links and you'll get some freebies like $25 of CRO or $25 in Bitcoin using BlockFi. Links are down below, but you must use those affiliate links. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.